Hey boys, welcome back again. So we went and ran Nick's car on the dyno on Saturday uh, with the new G30 turbo on there and sadly we couldn't even pull over 250 horsepower. Now the car's got stock cams and it does have aftermarket valve springs. Um, we came to the conclusion that it is running out of intake manifold flow. Um, the way we figured this out is the engine starts coming up hard on boost and around 7,000 hits peak horsepower of 240. And then by 7,000 to eight and a half, we're losing around 140 horsepower and the car ends up at sort of 100 horsepower at the wheels. So first of all, there's a few different intake manifolds I wanna run you through just so you know what's going on here. So we've got the 4E cylinder head. Now I've just got a laser cut plate here, just as reference for the gasket. And that fits perfectly on there and matches those holes. Now if we get this and sit it on a 4EFE manifold, now the outside you can see there is going to be a slight restriction there but the problem is on the inside. Now if we have a look on the inside of this port, I wonder if my camera is going to pick it up or not. The runner actually tapers down about 15 millimeters in. Yeah, there we go, we can see that. So you're going to get a serious restriction there. I used one of these manifolds years ago and we ended up at sort of 180 horsepower with a TDO5 would not make any more power. That's when I upgraded from this one and we went to one of those Chinese plenums and had no more power problems after that. Now the other option is, and this is what we had on Nick's car, this is a five EFE manifold. Now if we go and get our gasket and sit on there, sits on there nice, no restriction. Um, I went ahead and chopped this manifold up so we can see. It's a larger circle hole underneath, so that's gonna make up not having the oval shape anymore. If you look through the rest of the manifold, it looks pretty sweet. But the problem we're having with Nick's is this is the hole for the plenum to let the air in. And we've got a 40, regardless what you read online with the 4E, 4E throttle bodies, the throttle plate is 42 millimeters, and on the 5BFE one, the throttle plate's 50 millimeters. So I'm sure there's a CFM rating maximum horsepower, flow, maximum horsepower flow that we can get through that. Um, but this is our problem. We don't think the air can get through here fast enough and the engine's trying to suck the air in and can't get any more through this hole. We had a look online and we were just gonna buy another Chinese manifolds, but they're pretty crazy expensive and they take a long time to get here. So we've gone ahead and um, started to make our own one. Now I've got a 10 mil aluminium plate laser cut. That's gonna be our um, flange that bolts on the side of the cylinder head. I've got these velocity stacks. I just bought those online and we went ahead and used the dimensions off the Chinese manifold so we could replicate a manifold and just got a, a um, universal throttle body. That's 75 millimeters. So we're gonna bang all this together, get it back on Nick's car and see how much power she makes. So the manifold's coming along pretty sweet. We've got the velocity stacks there. Um, they're tacked in around the top. I've just put a socket there and a bit of um, flat bar just to stop it sagging in case we get too much heat in it. Um, the next part now, we've got to weld on the manifold flange onto these runners. But if you check this out, we've got a round hole and we've got an oval shape here. If we sit this over the top, it doesn't quite fit very nice. Um, yeah, okay, we could fill the gaps, but under here there's, there's a bit of an edge. So I'm just gonna squash these to an oval shape and then that should fill in there nice and neat. So I literally just stuck this in the bench vise and squashed each one of these down. Stuff that up a little bit, stuff that up a little bit. We can patch that up later. But now if you see these two center ones, we sit the gasket on there and it's like bang on. It's turned out absolutely perfect. So I'm not too fussed about these dents um, here because once I weld the bottom part, I can just hit that back up with the hammer and a punch and um, that'll clean up really nice. Need to get this now. 
sit it on the 10 mil aluminium flange there and we can tack that on. So we set the plenum on top of the runners and it's looking pretty sweet. I'm gonna go ahead now and tack that on. So our Chinese um, copy manifolds are coming along good. The only thing I don't like about them, so this black one's the Chinese one, it's got all the vacuum ports wired on the top there. So you've got to put your vacuum hoses on there, it looks pretty dicky. So Nick and I have come up with a pretty cool solution to that. Instead of running that, here's the weld on there. We're gonna weld this one dash six fitting on the side, which then will go to this right angle fitting. And we can run some hose up and mount this somewhere up on the firewall. Um, that fitting will have a hose that'll go this end, and then the other end goes over to the brake booster, and then we've got all the vacuum references here for blow out, waste gate, map sensor, and we can blank them off with um, these grub screws we don't want to use anymore. That should tidy up all of that uh, rubbish that's there. So the last thing now, we've just got to make that bracket for the accelerated cable, and she's ready to go on Nick's car. Well, manifold's done, she looks pretty sweet. Just gonna clean in here a little bit. Otherwise the ports look pretty good. How does this attach to the TPS? We've got to make our own little brackets on there. So does this keyway work though? Like is it the same or? Um, we just have to cut a slit out of this, take off the circle pit. And then that, that works. Oh, that's it. Let's put it on. Ooh. 